Hello, calculus students. Um, what I want to talk about is from section 7.1. It is not tested on your AP exam, but I think it's really interesting to see. And you have really all of the tools to understand this. I talked about it in a Zoom session very briefly, kind of off the cuff. Um, so I'll repeat some of what I've said there. Um, we'll look at it at the concept and then we'll do just a few examples. So um, what we're going to do is find the area between two curves. It's a bit of an extension to finding the area under a curve. So if f and g are continuous functions on the interval from a to b, and g of, f, g of x is always less than or equal to f of x, so I've drawn that here, um, then the area um, of the region bounded by, I didn't write that down, bounded by f, and g and x equals a and x equals b is given by this integral. Basically what this is is base times height plus base times height plus base times height, add them all together. It's like a Riemann sum. Um, the difference is the height doesn't just come from a single y value but rather a, the difference in the y values. So um, if we were talking about this extensively we would talk about a representative rectangle. And um, the basic model of working with calculus is to set it up with the pre-calculus and then apply essentially our limit process, which will be our differentiation or our integration. So our representative rectangle, what we would be interested in is base times height. Well, that base is going to be our delta x. And um, we're going to let it go to zero, which essentially changes it to our dx and our integration. And then our height comes from this y value minus this y value. And the nice thing is that this is true regardless of the signs of these y values. So I happen to have drawn both of these positive. This would be like for this representative rectangle, five minus two is three but it gives us an expression for that height for this entire um, region as we think about moving or accumulating from x equals a to x equals b. So it's just base times height all added together. Um, let's look at this idea that it doesn't matter whether these heights are positive or negative x values. So what if f is here and g is here? The height of this rectangle is still f minus g, or top minus bottom, I'll say it that way. Top minus bottom, okay. Um, let's say this is negative, I mean this is five and this is negative two. So you can see that that height for that particular representative rectangle would be seven, but it's five, minus a negative two. And this also works if they're both negative. Let's do an example. Okay, let's do number 17 from your text. So first of all, it's really useful to have a picture of this. Since x equals zero and x equal, x equal one are two of our bounding curves, I'm really going to start there or think about x equals zero, x equal to one, and then graph my other functions. So y equals x squared minus one, we know what y equals x squared looks like. This is just shifted down one. So when x is negative one, y is zero. When x is positive one, y is, when x is zero, y is negative one. When x is one, y is zero. So it looks like this. Okay, and then we know this is a line with a y-intercept of two, so I didn't draw that very much to scale. And when x is negative, when x is one, y is one, it's this line. Um, if this hadn't been given, then we would be hunting for that entire area, but x equals zero. Actually, let me back up. If that, if neither of those had been given, there would be a bounded region here, okay? but we want the region bounded by these four things. So x equals zero, this parabola, x equals one, and then the line. So this is the area that we're heading for. 
okay? So we're gonna set that up by thinking about rectangles. I'm gonna draw one representative rectangle. And its height is the, this y value of the line minus the y value of the parabola. Okay, that's the height, it's one dimensional. And then we're gonna multiply it by dx, there's the base. And oh yeah, we want an infinite number of them from x equals zero to one. Now it's typically um, a good idea to go ahead and simplify that first, ra rather than thinking about these as two separate functions now. So I get negative x squared minus x two plus one is three dx. Um, I was going to have you do all of this integration on your calculator where we um, in normal situation. So let's do this on the calculator. So under math, I'm going to do math nine, a numerical integral from zero to one. I want to integrate um, negative x squared minus x plus three with respect to x. And I get 3.25, okay? Now I wanna point something out about this, this as height. If x equals zero, then this is three. That's the height of this rectangle right here. If x equals one, then this is negative one minus one plus three, one. That's the height of this rectangle. So depending upon what value we plug in for x, between zero and one, this gives us the height of a rectangle. Okay, and so we want to make certain that that expression is really modeling what we are expecting it to model. Let's add on to this just a little bit. Okay, this one we're not given any horizontal lines. We just want to find the area of the region bounded by these two curves. A good place to start is to figure out where they intersect. So I'm going to set them equal to each other and solve. So I'm gonna set this equal to zero. I get x, um, let's say x plus two, x minus one. I'm gonna check that x squared, negative x plus two x is x, okay. So they intersect at x equals negative two or x equals one. That's going to tell you what part of this graph you need to draw. Okay, so I've drawn um, the line g of x, I drew that first, and then um, the curve f of x. And what's important here is to notice that um, g is always bigger than f. So our representative rectangle is going to be, um, we'll notice that it's from g to f. So our area is the height of that rectangle, g, which is x plus two, minus f, that's the height of our rectangle, times our base, and oh yeah, we want an infinite number of them from negative two to one, okay? So again, let's simplify the integrand. We get negative x squared, x minus two x is negative x plus two dx. And I wanna do some testing. When x is negative one, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that the height should be two. Let's plug in negative one, we get negative one plus one plus two, the height is two, okay? At x equals zero, the height should also be two. Yes, it is, okay? At x equals one, the height should be zero, and it is, okay? And then let's plug this into our calculator and we get that this area is 4.5. Okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna add on one more thing. Okay, so I've set this up for us. We wanna find the area of the region bounded by this cubic function and this um, parabola. So I've drawn the cubic function f of x in purple and the parabola in blue. And if we set them equal to each other solved, we would find that there were three points of intersection, negative two, negative eight, zero, zero, and two zero. Okay, we're going to need to use all three of those. 
So if we're thinking about x being negative 2 and we think about moving to the right, um, our representative rectangle could be something like this. And it goes from f down to g. But at x equals 0, it changes. And it goes from g down to f. So to find this total area bounded by these curves, we'd have to set up two integrals. We'd go from negative 2 to 0, and we would put f on top, 3x squared minus, I'm sorry, 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x. And then we would subtract g. I'm just going to go ahead and write this as plus x squared minus 2x dx. And then we would have to add the integral from 0 to 2 of g on top. So negative x squared plus 2x minus f. So minus 3x cubed plus x squared plus 10x dx. <clears throat> These would just be inverses of each other, you would see, if you simplify this. Um, and then um, the integration is easy. We also could use our calculator. Um, turns out the answer is 24. That's not so important, except it's kind of nice when it's 24. Um, <clears throat> I lied to you. I said we were going to do one more thing. We're going to do yet one more thing, and that is truly the last thing we'll do. Okay, let's find the area of the region bounded by these curves. And notice that we happen to be given x as a function of y instead of y as a function of x. One thing that that yields is, oops, this should be a square. One thing that that yields is this function, which is not a function, or this relation, which is not a function. At least it's not a function of x, it's a function of y. Okay, and then this line is, of course, a function of x, and we could also think of it as a function of y. So here's the problem, and this becomes really important when you go into these next ideas of finding volumes of solids, is that we want to choose, uh, make a nice choice for a representative rectangle. And um, we either are going to choose dx, or we're going to choose dy. Okay, now let's first think about dx because that's what we've done so far. If we chose dx, this is easy. It's this curve minus this curve. Let's move across. Okay, and we're fine all the way to there. But then something different happens. First of all, it's just defined differently. So we'd have to use two integrals. The other thing, it's defined from this curve to the same curve. Now, that's not out of the question that we could do this. We would solve for y and we'd get a plus and a minus and we would use those. But if we did dx, we would have to um, go from negative x equals negative 1 to 2 and then 2 to whatever that point is. I don't even have it marked. Okay. The other problem is our, y, our heights would be in terms of, it would be y values in terms of x because our variable of integration would be dx, but we don't have y in terms of x, so we'd have to do some manipulation. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to chop it up dy. And two things are nice about this. First of all, our functions are x, our relations are x as a function of y. The other thing, if we go from y equals negative two, up to y equals 1, our representative rectangles are defined the same the entire way up. They go between the parabola and the line. Okay, This distance is defined the same as this distance and this distance. Okay, So um, the a difference is we're going to take this bigger x value minus this smaller x value and to find that height. For example, right here, we would take this x value on the parabola, and we would subtract this x value from the line, and we get this. We're essentially finding the difference between those two x values for that particular representative rectangle. Otherwise, it's the same. So once we choose dy, that drives everything about the integral, 
including our limits of integration. So we're going to go from y equals negative two up to y equals one. We're going to take the x value of, instead of top minus bottom, we do right minus left. So we take the x value of the curve on the right minus the x value of the curve on the left. I'll just write it as y minus one. And then our height, that small element in the base times height computation is dy. Okay, again, I would simplify this first. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in descending order. Three minus one is two. And let's, let's take a peek at this. Um, though I don't have great numbers written down, so we won't do that. But um, I'll tell you the answer. It's nine over two, that's not so important. Okay, so um, with what we would have been doing next, the decision about whether to do dx or dy would really drive how the expressions were set up for volumes and um, often you can do it two ways usually one way is hard and one way is easier so um just wanted to give you a peek at that i wish we were fully doing it um, no requirements of homework from this Keep reviewing, keep studying. Um, we've got about one more week. You're going to do great. Goodbye.